how to stand up for yourself. Maybe you work with a bully. Maybe your boss is a bully. <laughs> That's terrible. Maybe you have family members or friends who kind of push you around. Maybe you've never said anything to them about it. Are you a shy person who, who feels like if you say something, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. And so you just kind of shove it all in, but you feel a little bit walked over a little bit used. Yeah. That's, that's really bad. I understand how you feel because I have very strong, uh, uh, opinionated family, big personalities. And I felt that way for a lot of my life. I was the youngest, I was, you know, brushed off, discounted, and I really felt insignificant. So I needed to learn how to stand up for myself. Today, I'm going to give you five, maybe six ways to really come into the fullness of your confidence and stand up for yourself, not in an offensive way where you're going to be in people's faces, but in a very gentle, honoring, and truly strong way so that your confidence can grow and you not only bring value to your own life, but you bring value to the lives of those around you. If that sounds good, give us a thumbs up and check. Are you a subscriber of our channel yet? If not, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you know when we drop videos like this to help you live a better life. Okay, we'll be back with those simple ways to know how to stand up for yourself. Get a pen and paper. There's a lot to learn. Guild Coaching. More success, less stress how to stand up for yourself, especially when you're not in the habit of standing up for yourself. It takes a lot of courage to make the shift, the mental shift, the physical shift, the shift in your actions, your words, and your thoughts to be able to go from a place where you feel like a bit of a doormat to where you really feel confident and you feel as though you have worth and you have value and you're tired of getting walked on. You don't have to be an angry person who's standing up for themselves. You can be very peaceful and calm and, um, and happy actually while you're standing up for yourself. Because when you follow the, the steps that I'm giving you today to understand how to come into that confidence, to stand up for yourself, you, you grow in that ability, you grow in that mindset and it just becomes your way of life. So just imagine that life where you walk through confidently with your head held high and you feel good about yourself so that when something happens that used to throw you off track or make you feel bad or cause you to have negative thoughts, it's just something that you observe. Doesn't that sound like a great shift? Okay. First, I want you to know there's something that I tell a lot of people when they feel like they've been hurt by others when they feel like they're around people who are bullies, when they feel like they're around people who are unkind. And that is that hurt people hurt people. People who have hurt inside them are the people that hurt others. So if people are ugly to you, if they're rude to you, if they're abrasive, if they're unkind, please just see that as hurt inside them, shifting that per perception and, and understanding that hurt people hurt people can help you to be more compassionate to them. When someone is hurt, it's because they don't have compassion. Now, it doesn't really sound like a great first step to have compassion for the people who are ugly to you, but it'll change everything because their stance is abrasive and nasty. So you can't fight fire with fire, right? You need something different. And so if that is fire, the abrasiveness, then what is your water? And that would be kindness and compassion because it's something that doesn't exist in that realm. So remember that hurt people hurt people. And then if somebody brushes you off or says something with the intention of minimizing you or causing you to adopt the feeling that you aren't worthy or important, remind yourself that's not true. That's not my truth. And that must be a hurt person. So I'm just going to send out energetically, just send out my best love. All right. So that's number one, understand that and be compassionate. Number two, be authentic. You will always get pushed around if you're not standing in your own authenticity, because you can't have firm fit, firm footing if you're standing in the shoes of another person. So stand in your own authenticity, really know who you are. Recently, um, one of our children, uh, a teenager, 
uh, who has been very timid, timid and standing up for herself, especially with one particular person, she finally figured out a very respectful way to discuss with this person um, some of the things that he'd been doing that were, were had been hurting her. Now, this person didn't really accept the communication very well, but that really wasn't the core of it for my daughter. Uh, she she was so she told me later that day after she had stood up to this bully really um, that she felt so proud of herself that even though the talk didn't go well she was so proud of herself for actually doing that because she was true to her feelings she was true to the truth of the situation she was tired of kind of like laying down and letting this person power over her and power past her and and cause her to develop feelings of insignificance. And she said, you know, I feel so powerful and so confident. And the only way that she got there with her power, with her confidence was embracing her own authenticity. So embrace your own authenticity. Another way to stand up for yourself, another fantastic way. And I want everybody to think about this. This doesn't even apply to just standing up for yourself. It applies to every conversation. Wait. When somebody says something or does something, you don't have to answer right then and there. You can wait. Give yourself time to absorb it. Give yourself time to think about it. I'm a really fast acting type A person and my husband is brilliant, but he, he processes things in a different way than I do. I'm very, very fast. He is not very, very fast in his processing. And sometimes I'll ask him a question and pretty quickly I'm like, hello, did you hear me? And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm processing. Because he wants to give back a thoughtful answer. Don't feel pressured to fight. The person who starts the fight is the second person to speak. So if someone's being aggressive or abrasive toward you, know that you have the freedom of pacing your communication at your speed. It's part of authenticity. Pace your communication at your speed and give yourself time to wait it out. Take a breath. Think about it. Say, you know, I, I, I need a day. I need however long it is. And instead of standing up for yourself in words, no, that's not true. What I was doing to clarify, clarify. So we've talked about compassion, authenticity, waiting. Now we're talking about clarity. A lot of times when people feel as though they need to stand up for themselves, it's because there's confusion. So without using I or me in the sentence, you can ask questions, clarify through curiosity is, is the way that I like to put it. You can ask questions. Let me ask you, you know, what, what's behind you saying this and what's behind this and that, and just really take a step back, understand that you are not this argument or you are not this feeling that you are just simply participating in this action right now and clarify through curiosity, that's questions. Also, you have to have really firm boundaries, <laughs> really good, really firm boundaries. You can check out the video description for a link to our boundaries assessment so you can find out exactly where your boundaries need a little bit of brushing up, a little bit of cleaning up, but you've got to have good boundaries, time boundaries, verbal boundaries, physical boundaries. You've got to know where you end and where another person begins. And then you also need to know where they end and where you begin because people will often try to push their opinions or their ideals, their expectations on you. So have good, healthy, defined boundaries and practice. A daily practice of mindset activities is absolutely necessary. You wouldn't expect to be able to, to be a bodybuilder if you didn't work out and lift weights every day. You don't expect pro basketball players to be in tip top shape for the big game unless they practice every single day unless they have that plan. And so that's why we have the playlist here on YouTube with recorded sessions. We've made it really easy for you to do a 10 minute mindset practice every day. People are like, why 10 minutes? 10 minutes because it's 1% of your day and you can invest 1% to make the other 99% better. By mindset practice, I mean affirmations, um, journaling, yoga, meditation, something. A lot of people, um, including me, I, I use running because it's a repetitive activity. My my muscular energy, my mechanical energy can, can get out in one direction while my brain is able to function and think about other things. 
that is a really fantastic way for me to be outside and be in a meditative state. Repetitive exercise really does put your brain into close, close to a meditative state, so you can use that as well. Practice, but every single day, and it has to be positive practice. If you practice with positivity, something that's aimed at building up your confidence, then your confidence will grow because you are building on it little bit by bit, baby steps, little bites, day by day. That is how to stand up for yourself in a way that's not defensive or offensive, but in a way that is truly standing in the power of you. If this has been of help to you, give me a thumbs up. And also, if you didn't subscribe before, do that now and hit the bell so you know the next time that we drop a video to help you live a happier and more fulfilled life.